Hey, this is Mike with the Weekly Driver. Today we're going to be reviewing the 2016 Lexus GSF. 2,000 of these bad boys were made. And a couple disclaimers before we dive in. One, I'm not a lawyer. Two, definitely not a doctor. And three, I'm not a car guy. However, I do love tech. So we're going to see what kind of tech this thing has. Connect a couple phones to it. Check out call quality, Bluetooth, audio. Just see what's going on without the engine. Let's get started. That's our cue to jump in. Keys in the pocket. Power on. Oh, hello, James. Hello. Come on in. All right, so this is what the uh, dash looks like. Currently, we are not connected to anything. Excuse the flashing. That's video recording. And you have a joystick toggle which we'll use to configure everything. Toggle is very sensitive. Seems like barely touching it skips around. There we go. Very light touches. You know, you can be you can be a, a gentleman 99 times out of 100 and if you're a jerk one of those times out of In the center console, we have two USB connections and one auxiliary port, uh, mono, and a car charger. So right now I have a iPod and this phone plugged into the USB ports. I'd like to note that these USB ports do not support fast charging. However, the cigarette lighter plug does support fast charging, so if your phones can charge quickly, then you can use this port for that. Couldn't find any other ports in the front, so you're limited to two USB connections, one auxiliary, and one cigarette. So, if you're like me and have multiple devices when you travel long distances, you may want to have something like that. You can plug in a couple devices if you have a passenger who also needs to charge. The back seat has one 12 volt, 120 watt port for charging for back seat passengers. No USB or auxiliary connections, pretty basic back here, not a lot going on. No climate control. It's all up front. I'm gonna test out the audio here. We're playing a little piano jam. It's gonna pick up in bass. And we're just gonna see what the default is like. So something interesting happened when the volume got up pretty high, and this is not a lot of bass in this particular song. The door rattled quite a bit, quite a bit of rattling. Let's see if we can pick it out. I don't know if you could hear that, but this door rattled quite a bit from the piano key. We're gonna switch up, switch up the audio and do something with some hard hitting bass and see what happens. I would hope that with a car in this price range, the sound out of the box or out of the crate container sounds spectacular. Whoa, I can't hear myself. So this song had some pretty hard hitting bass and the car did not hit those lower frequencies. We we're missing out on a lot of the bass there. It had, I don't know, fairly decent mid and high range, but the lower frequencies just were not there, which is a little disappointing in this car, but I suppose there are other priorities like engine, speed, that sort of thing. So I've started, I've started to get the hang of this little joystick. It has a very subtle click for navigating around. You can just feel that tactic feedback for little clicks. Wait, and then you have an enter, which makes kind of a funky sound. Now I'm gonna try connecting to the Bluetooth and see how easy this setup is. I have not read the instruction manual. We're just gonna see what's intuitive. Bluetooth. Looks like we're gonna have to pause this video 
and change screen so we can do that. Well, to get connected, one thing to note is I had to cancel the setup on both devices and then reconnect for the Lexus to show up. The iPhone you see is plugged into the USB and the Samsung is connected through Bluetooth. No idea why the iPhone is showing up because it does not have Bluetooth, it is super old. So I've been sitting here shooting here shooting video for about 10 minutes, AC off. It's about, I don't know, 80 degrees out, so it is getting hot. Let's go ahead and test this climate control. Apparently, this thing will cool down. I can hear fans behind me somewhere in there. I can feel cool air on my back, probably from mid to lumbar. Don't really feel it on my legs, but it does feel nice. Definitely a good difference of cool air on the spine. It worked very quickly. The engine has been off this whole time, so I'm impressed with how quickly the cool air begins to flow. I normally drive a manual transmission. It's about 20 years old. And so I'm used to having to rev the vehicle to get any cold air. I can feel cool air coming up from the center of the seat. Let's see if we can do this without a crotch shot. Right there in the center is where the cool air is coming up from. Of course, the way I sit doesn't do me any good because my legs are on the left and right side, so I'm not really enjoying the cold air. But if you sat with your legs like that, you would totally feel it. So I'm not sure how much the lower part of the AC actually helps. I'm curious how other people sit now. I've never paid attention to how people sit in their cars. Just, just flipped on the auto AC. Let's get it cool in here. Let's bring it way down. I kind of like that dial. I'll just Whoa. The top screen says AC is on. But the air coming out does not feel too cold. Let's turn this thing on. Yes, oh yeah. Having the gas engine running, huge difference in the temperature. Now we're getting some cold air. Let's see, while the interior of the vehicle cools down, we have three different settings for adjusting your seat. I'm currently set to L3 and it worked well. Some other buttons here, I have no idea what they do and I don't really care. Plenty of ways to adjust your seat. Going back, we have some sort of thing here that supposedly looks cool, but I have no idea what it actually does aside from providing a way for backseat passengers to poke you with a thin wire. So Bluetooth was pretty easy to set up, very straightforward and intuitive. AC works really well. Let's turn off the uh, seat coolers. So let's turn up the heat and get it hot. So there we go. So this switched over to the left side for seat warmers. Let's just make everything auto. I'm trying to get these two to combine. Not really happening. So I'm waiting to feel the heat on my back from the seat climate control. I'm just feeling with my hand, my lower back is starting to feel warm. I find it interesting that the cool air kicked in so much faster than the heat was. I expect the heat to happen a lot faster. I also can't tell if the steering wheel heats up or if the sun is just on it. it go either way. So I guess you can count that as a feature. The steering wheel feels warm if the sun is on it. James has rejoined me and I've decided to torture him by making him try and connect my iPad to the Bluetooth. Okay. And he has not read the instruction manual. I have not. <laughs> and we might hear some cursing, which will have to be edited out. I'm already lost in that wonderful. He's already way beyond all help. <laughs> I don't know what to do. This is just going info, downhill info. fast. And really, I'm curious how 
people with James types of minds work <laughs> in trying to connect. Because I knew where to go. It seemed intuitive to me, but apparently I was wrong. Because weather is not where you connect Bluetooth. No. Oh, my goodness. How about the menu? Where's the menu? How come it doesn't go back to the menu? What is this? App setup. How's that? And no. All right, now we're cooking with fire. And that took me about 45 seconds, I think. <laughs> we're about a minute and 15 into the video. Okay. So that was trying to add the existing oh, back. Oh, okay, cancel. Cancel that out. We want to add a new device. Okay. I'm not quite sure where either. I'm lost too because this wants to add the iPod that was previously connected. Or maybe it's trying to add your iPhone since you have your phone on you and your Bluetooth yes. is on. There, connect as a phone. Connect phone. I guess there. let's uh, try that. It could also be seen my iPad is something. I'm just going to toggle Discoverable on the iPad and see if something comes up. No. Yes. Hit device info. Let's see what that says. Because it shows that something is connected. But I don't see what's actually connected. Did you connect your phone to this earlier? Uh-uh. Okay. So some unknown iPhone is connected to this vehicle. <laughs> Who's 509? Some previous driver. Yeah, some previous driver. That's it. Sorry, previous driver. We should delete this. So how do we do that? Uh, try hitting back. Let's go back. Try hitting remove. Let's just remove that. Yeah, remove that, just hit something. <laughs> yes. I'm glad you're having trouble with the toggle too. It's not just me. Okay. I feel like it's overly sensitive. Very you... sensitive, yeah. So now we're gonna add. There we go. So it looks like you can have two devices added and that's oh, it. Oh, okay. Because now we have an add option. The first the Samsung, yeah, hit that. Okay, so you have a max of two devices to be paired to this vehicle. Okay. And that's probably a Lexus software thing and not vehicle specific. Mm -hmm. So if you have more than two phones, you are out of luck. There's a phrase for that, which we're not going to say on video. <laughs> that's right. We can use the acronym, right? Yeah, yes. what, what's the acronym? SOL. Yes, that. So, what, so one thing that I've always wondered about is how text messages are handled. In some vehicles, an actual message will come up or just a notification that you have one. So I'm going to have James here send me a text and let's see what appears on the screen. So now we're just waiting for some typing, some serious typing action going on over here. I wish I could show you, but it's not suitable for film. Confirmed it was sent, just waiting for it to come through. Okay, I received a notification on my phone, but nothing came up on the screen indicating I have a text message, which is a bit disappointed. I was hoping to see some sort of indicator and no such notification has occurred. It's also possible there's a setting we missed upon which some Lexus representative will send mm -hmm. a very rude email. Apparently you can add a vehicle signature, which seems like a great idea. Let's try that, because I want everyone to know that I'm driving while I send them a text message. Mm -hmm. This will be great if you get pulled over by the police, and you want to make sure that you have plenty of evidence showing that you are not driving safely. 
Let's go to these notifications here and see if there's something we missed. So SMS notification pop-up is set to on and did not work. So maybe there's a Bluetooth setting or maybe it's an Android thing. I have no idea. Received another notification on my phone and nothing on the vehicle. I can try and send a text. I can try and send a text to James and see if he can view my vehicle signature. I'm not sure how to send a new text. Moving on, James. Moving on to the navigation screen using the joystick is way easier on this. I have no idea why if you're just like clicking and then you move around places. So let's go here. Let's try just double tapping. Apparently double tapping in the same spot is incredibly difficult. It doesn't do anything. Let's navigate here. What does that button do? Press. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Useless. Destination down below. Destination. Let's see. I really hate this system. This is the hardest thing to use. Coming from using a phone to navigate, this thing really sucks. And it's super tedious. Yes. Where are we going? I have no idea where. We're gonna go whatever starts with an eight and a four. 84th, sounds good. And we don't have much of a choice, we're doing that. Whoever lives here, Thanks. This is where we're going, and go. Calculating. Calculating. And here we go. I think it's a very good system, actually. You like this? I don't like this at all. I feel like the screen has a lot going on in a small space. The route guidance will start now. Three different panels, mm -hmm. which you can adjust, you know. I still feel like the first and third panels are a bit redundant. Show me how to adjust those. That looks like. A little bit better, but it still feels cluttered. I'm just not a fan of this kind of navigation system. There you go. It's gonna be a hard sell for me. There we go, compass, now I feel at home. <laughs> I wish there was an option to navigate by stars. There it would go. just show you the stars above you. That would make navigation so much easier. Yeah. I'm glad you agree. I'm guessing the address search is the same that we experienced before. Yeah. Which is gonna drive me crazy, so I'm just gonna pause the video at this point. Okay, I see this on video, but the video, but the heads up display is pretty cool. Shows your MPGs and then the navigation has an arrow. Kinda hard to pick up on this video here, but maybe you can see it when we hit a couple shadows. It has a turning That's arrow. Right. There we go, there's an arrow. Whoa, whoa. So, I've been sitting here shooting these videos for a bit and the car just turned off. Power turned off to save battery, which means either we're running out of battery or this is a safety okay. feature. So I'm just gonna turn this back on. Okay. I did get a text from you. Did you finally? Uh -huh. Does it have a vehicle signature? No. Darn it, I really wanted you to see this vehicle that I was driving so I can feel cool. Blah, 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 continue. We want to check out this Lexus app suite. How do we get there? Menu. All right, got a lot of interesting apps here. Movie tickets is not something I normally consider ordering for my vehicle. Open table is another interesting thing. Stocks, as I always like to check my stocks while going for long drives. <laughs> yeah. Fuel guide, that looks a little bit more up my alley. Yeah. 
Okay, needs an active application, so I'm guessing we need something on my phone. So we're gonna come back after searching the Google Play Store for some sort of Lexus application. Mm -hmm. The Lexus Inform App Suite and the Lexus Inform Lock, and apparently I can unlock the car from my phone. So I'm gonna see if I can lock James inside of the car while I'm outside of the car. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave the keys with him, just in case. Let's see how well these apps work. Good luck, don't die. <laughs> so as part of part of connecting the Lexus Inform app, it has an option to scan the VIN instead of typing it in. So one option to scan is up here, and it wants you to fill the screen with that barcode, but as you can see, there's this, there's something in the way. So you can't really get your phone very close to that to actually fill the screen with the orientation of the device. And down here, you can get much closer but the scanning still doesn't work. I was unable to get it to scan, which is a bit disappointing. I've used plenty of QR scanning and barcode scanning apps, and this one seemed to fail and not being very easy to actually scan the barcode. All right, finally got the, got the Lexus Inform app suite connected, and I connected my Pandora and Facebook accounts. Just required logging into Pandora and then connecting Facebook, which was already on the phone. Both apps were already on my phone. I attempted to open the remote and it immediately crashed so let's try again turns out you have to regis register twice once for the apps and then register again for the remote unfortunately when trying to register for the remote I couldn't validate the VIN and I'm not sure if it's because this is a loaner to review or if there is a problem with the actual app so we're gonna leave that function alone and I won't be testing the remote from the phone but let's check out Pandora so, un so unbeknownst to me, while I was messing around with the apps, Pandora had connected and pulled up on the screen. So let's just pop in some early jazz and see what plays. Audio is much lower than what the iPod was. I suppose it's good because you're probably not going to play horribly loud. And we're going to mute this because we don't have licensing for this song. Mm -hmm. That's Benny Goodman, famous, famous song. I want to skip back to the apps and go to the Facebook app, which I connected. Facebook Places. Blah, blah, blah. Set up your account. I already did. Oh, that's not it. All right, we're going to stop this and try configuring the application. Apparently, it does not connect automatically like Pandora does. By the way, Pandora still playing on the side, which is awesome. Okay, so I was having trouble connecting to Facebook Places. I reconnected through my phone, and we're gonna try opening this up again. This is actually the third time, and I keep getting this error, so apparently Facebook Places doesn't work, and I have no idea what it does. Mm -hmm. So, here's my snarky comment of thanks for another useless feature. So who knows what Facebook Places actually does? You'll probably want some sort of connection. Oh, it comes up right away. See if we can find what I've searched for recently. Nope. A little overly sensitive joystick action. There we go. Apparently I've searched for ramen <laughs> in the recent past. So what kind of ramen shows up here? Alright, let's go there. You can see reviews. You can call. Let's see if this integrates with the navigation. This would be awesome. So the Yelp app seems to work pretty well. It pulls up on the map. Let's go there. Takes a little bit to calculate. The route guidance will start now. All right, so I would rate about half of a the Yelp app as being Street. pretty cool and a useful feature. Facebook places, who knows? Yelp, not too shabby. Okay, so we're gonna try the, 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 we're trying the fuel guide again now that I've connected the phone. And now it's showing fuel nearby based on price. Well, there's the uh, energy saving feature again. Looks like this does connect to your phone and use data. I'm not sure how much. We're gonna go in and check this out in just a moment. See how much data this app actually used. 
and I'm not sure where they're pulling their gas data from. I would guess some sort of program like Gas Buddy. Who knows? Okay, we're gonna stop this and check out data usage, and then we're gonna end this video and be done with the Lexus GS. We checked out the, the app usage. We used about five megabytes in about 10 minutes of just browsing Yelp and looking for gas. This is the 2016 Lexus GSF. Really fun to drive, audio quality little disappointing, had a bit of a rattle. Bluetooth was a breeze to connect. Interesting potential with the apps. Could not get Facebook places to work, so we have no idea what that actually does. Yelp was pretty awesome. Gas is useful if you're traveling and need to find cheap or nearby gas. All right, James, James, ready to take it away? Yes. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Yes.